All right, Aiden, so uh, we'll talk about why uh, this would, well, actually, why would you be making history uh, being on the cover of Men's Health? Yeah, well, first, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much. This is amazing. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. Well, I'm excited to have you here. <laughs> um, so if I get on the cover of Men's Health magazine, I will be the first transgender male on the cover of Men's Health magazine. Wow, ever. that would wow. be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it would be phenomenal, just phenomenal. Okay, so I think this is obviously, Bruce Jenner opened this whole world up to a lot of people, and we're all just learning about what that means, mm -hmm. and so explain transgender to everyone. So a really basic understanding of transgender would just be you're born, your biological gender is one, and you identify as the other. So for example, I was born biologically a female, yet I identify, my soul identifies as a male. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at what age did you realize this? You were, so you were gay for a while, you were a lesbian for a while. Yes, yes. Okay, and then did you know then, did you feel different being a lesbian? Then you thought, well, that, it's gonna be the next step? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I kind of had a little different story of most transgender people. I feel like some people will say that they identified at a really young age but I didn't quite have that. I came out as a lesbian as early as 13, but I didn't come out officially to friends and family until I was about 17. And I, how were your parents when you said you were gay? Were they okay with you being a lesbian? Yes, um, a funny quick story is when I was in third grade, I told my mother that I had a crush on someone and the first question she asked me was, is it a boy or a girl? So she must have known something yeah. was up. <laughs> well, good for her for being open-minded and asking that question and not assuming. Okay, so you came out to your family when you were 16, mm -hmm. and then why did you feel like you weren't really a lesbian? It just felt like something didn't fit. Like, it felt like I was a lesbian only because I was a girl who liked girls. So that was the title that was put on me rather than the title that I was felt that I identified with. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was actually just driving home one day with an ex-girlfriend of mine, and she kind of turned to me one day, and I was around the age of 20, and she said, have you ever thought of being a boy? And I was just kind of like, I don't, I don't know. What, what are you asking me that question for? I'm not sure, you know? I don't really know where it's coming from. So I, I went home that night, and her voice kind of stuck in the back of my head. That question just, you know, do you want to be a boy? Do you want to be a boy? Just kept rolling through my head. And so, of course, I took to Google and I started Googling, you know, um, girl that becomes a boy or how to grow up to be a man. And um, the internet just engulfed me. And I was just, for the next, you know, 48 hours, it was videos and links and articles and right. everything was just totally involved. I think I have to say at this point, I think people's fear uh, of like, oh my God, if there's if it's just floating out there, then my child is gonna just look on the internet and become a different gender. I don't <laughs> think it works that way, just in case anybody's <laughs> worried about the internet. Not at all. I don't think you can become gay. I don't think you can become anything. Nobody, you are what you are. So I don't, I don't want people, because it sounds like, you know, once you started seeing that, that made you become a male, but that's not what No, happened. it was more like that was the missing puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone said I was a lesbian, but I had this missing spot, and I was like, okay, you know, it, lo it all looks right, but something's not right. And mm -hmm. then once I found out what emotionally it meant to be transgender, I, that was it. I was like, this is my ticket. This is the piece. I had no idea because I didn't even know it existed. Right. That was, and, it, and you feel more in, in, true to yourself right now. Oh, yes. I feel like today, sitting with you right now, I'm at my most authentic self than I've ever been in, yeah. in my whole life. And, well, that's all that matters. Yeah, definitely. I cannot believe we've never met before. I can't either, and I am so excited. Like, I was like, today, I woke up this morning, and I was like, oh my God, today is the day I finally get to meet Ellen. Um, <laughs> you know, I wanted to say that you have been such a huge inspiration to me, your whole career, the fact that you get to just be who you are, live in your truth, make everybody laugh, help people, and everyone loves you. It's such a wonderful example of possibility for me, and, um, We've never met before, but a couple of years ago, I was on the cover of Time Magazine. Yes, you were. First transgender on the cover of Time Magazine. And, with that. and you tweeted me. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah. She tweeted, it's about time. And it, it, it just felt very, because Ellen back in the day was on the cover of Time Magazine, too. And 
that moment was so special for me and for so many people in our community. And it just felt really good. And it was a weird thing being on the cover of Time Magazine. It's like, oh my God. Sure is. Uh, I hadn't been famous for, for like five minutes and I'm on the cover of Time Magazine. I was like, oh my God, this is weird. And so your tweet was like, okay, maybe this is okay. Yeah, well, it's more than okay. I mean, you're, you're talking about an example. I mean, and you're so successful. You're doing so many uh, I mean, your, your work in Rocky Horror Picture Show and Orange is the New Black and speaking engagements and everything that you're doing. So congratulations to you. Thank because you. you're, you're a great example. Thank you know? You. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say uh, I, I'm proud of you, good for you, and Thank I you. know that this feels really good to actually be able to be yourself. So tell me uh, at what age you realized that you were transgender. Um, I think it's something that I've always known, but I didn't always have the vocabulary to explain it. Mm -hmm. um, and it took me a while to find it because I think like the word transgender has like, a lot of negative connotations in the media. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it wasn't until I took a gap year to actually get better from having an eating disorder that I was able to figure it out. And, and that kind of revelation came when I sat down and I, I was like, I don't think that I hate my body because of how it looks. I hate it or I, not hate it, but I, I didn't like it because it didn't represent the gender that I, that I feel. Right. Um, I, did we show any pictures of you? Because the pictures are amazing. When you see, I don't think anybody would have looked at you and thought yeah. that uh, you were in any way suffering. And especially in the eating disorder, I, anybody who has an eating disorder, obviously there is a deeper issue for it, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. And I'm glad you found out. Okay, so you're this amazing, Swimmer, and you're recruited by Harvard. They say, you know, you're on the swim team. Right. Um, but they saw you as a girl. Right, as a woman. And so, at what point did the, did you share with them that now that you were a man? Um, so I I told my coach. Um, I think it was April of my senior year. So I, I recruited in September, and I told her in April that I was going to take a gap year because I needed to get better for my eating disorder. And she said, OK, just keep me posted. And so throughout that process, I called her. I think it was about once a month, and I told her what was going on, and I told her what I was working on. And when gender identity came up, I said, hey, um, I'm working on my gender identity, and I don't know, what, what, you know what's, what's going to be the implications of this, but I'm transgender, and I just know that I really want to swim. And she was fine with that? Yeah, she just rolled with it, and she was like, look, Skyler, like, I want you to be happy, and if you want to swim, you want to swim, and we want you to be on this team, we love you. And she said, well, we're going to make it work. So you wanted to swim uh, in, on the girls' team? Were you going to do that? Yeah, initially I was going to lead this kind of crazy double life of being a woman in the pool, um, but then being a man in school. And, uh, it rhymes. <laughs> it does rhyme, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, I think my coach saw through that kind of... Um, and said, you know, this you're not going to be healthy if you do that because it was, you know, I was still warring with myself. It yes. would still be a kind of crazy thing to do. You know? Right. Yeah. And so the male coach said he was fine. He said, join our team. Yeah. And then he talked to all the guys on the team. And were you surprised that like all the guys were completely welcoming and fine, and no yeah. one had an issue with it? Yeah, it was it was crazy. He, Kevin, um, the men's coach, actually talked to the whole team beforehand before he talked to me, and he said. You know, team, do we do we want to do this? We have this trans kid. Do we want to let him on the team? And they were like, yeah. And that's that's been consistent right. since. And I know that he went to them. He said, you know, maybe in a group, nobody wanted to speak out. But he yeah. said, individually, come talk to me if you want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. So then you had top surgery. You had your breast removed, right? right? So that must have been yeah. amazing yeah. to uh, <laughs> to to then swim. Like, what was that like? The first time <laughs> you're like standing there in a yeah. speedo and not you don't have a <laughs> it was it was terrifying to be honest with you. Yeah, um, I I told I was actually at Harvard the first time it happened, and I took I was, I was sitting like on the deck, and I was you know all covered up, and I asked you know I, I told my coach I'm really scared, and he said don't worry about it. So I just I literally took off my shirt and jumped in the pool. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it was it was it was really great. I think there was a lot of um, new sensations, literally like physical sensations that I felt because I'd never had those parts of my body exposed underwater. Right. Um, but it was it was incredible. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here and. Um, uh, it's just so it's so brave of you to, to first of all for, to serve the country and then to be uh, not supported like this and to come out and um, I, I just I, I admire you so much because it's really tough you're, when people just don't understand. So so let's be clear. So you were born a, a, a boy, a man. Yes. You were born a, a, a female. Correct. Okay. And how long ago did you start your transitions, each of you? So I started my transition in 2012. Um, I joined the military in 2004. Uh, 
you know, it was a really difficult time. I was still serving under Jonas Ontel, um, but I was able to be a part of that repeal. Um, but the repeal did not include trans service members. Mm -hmm. So during my transition, my physical changes started happening. It was, it was really prevalent. And um, my leadership called me into the commander's office and asked me, they handed me a tissue, a piece of tissue paper, and asked me to remove the makeup from my face to prove that I wasn't wearing any. And I wiped it, there was nothing. So there's a little, it was really difficult for me. So for you, it was not. And for you, it was a different experience, right? It was slightly different. So I joined the military in 2010 um, for education benefits initially. You know, I felt like a hamster going in the wheel every day at work um, and throughout college. And I, I wanted to serve in the military, so I enlisted in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I started my medical transition in 2012. And from there, I was able to live more authentically, though I couldn't out myself to my leadership because that could potentially be writing my discharge. Right. So you, you met President Obama, right? Yes, yes that was did. a really humbling and exciting experience. To represent not just us, but the trans military community um, as a first trans, actively serving trans couple, um, to stand with him and smile yeah. and take those pictures, so. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think, and I said that in the intro, I don't think people understand that there are over 15,000 transgender people serving in the military. And that is, like I say, it's a selfless act it's for someone who, to want to do it in the first place and then to not be supported. What does that feel like to, to have the support of your unit but not to have the support of the president? You know, when I got back from my deployment in Afghanistan in 2015, um, I served as male the entire time I was in Afghanistan without fault or failure. Uh, and it was amazing. I had a fun time, ironically, in Afghanistan. Um, and when I got back home to my home station, my leadership um, saw that I was male and they wanted to do unto me the best possible thing. So they let me go by all male regs and standards. So I was allowed to wear male dress blues and grow out this horrible mustache <laughs> and just live more authentically day in and day out. And by my leadership doing that, that resonated throughout the entire military. And that is what kind of spearheaded what we now know as the policy. Right. So, but, but for the most part, you, you are supported. And everybody you work with and, and are, are on the field with, everybody, no one has a problem with it. Not at all. No one has 100%. a problem. 100% supportive. All right, we have to take, so let's talk about you. So you were assigned uh, male when mm -hmm. you were born, yep. and you have an identical twin brother. Jonas, yes. Okay, and at what age did you know that that was not right for you? Well, I really started um, thinking like, you know, this was, something wasn't right. You know, I, I, I realized that. At what age? I probably, three, four years old. Three, really? Three, four years old. Well, it, it was, my case was kind of unique because I have an identical twin brother, and so growing up with him, he was, you know, identifying with all of these male things, and he was feeling very comfortable in his body, and I wasn't. And so at the same time that everyone was like, yeah, Jonas, you're a boy, um, they were telling me I was too young to understand what gender I was. Um, but, you know, I went up to my parents, and I was like, listen, I've, for a couple years, I've tried this whole boy thing. I think it's lovely. Um, it's just not me. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, so as, as soon as I could, I tried to voice to my parents. And you were in a small, small town in Maine. Yep. And, and what did your parents, how did they react to that? So my father grew up very conservative. And he, um, he really had set expectations for what boys and girls were supposed to be like. You know, this is what you do. This is what your sister does. Um, and so when I came out to him, he didn't, that did not fit into his plan of what raising twin boys was going to be like. Yeah. So he just, you know, he blocked that out. He ignored it. Um, he focused on his hobbies. And that left my mother on her own for a while. Um, she didn't grow up with the same kind of expectations that my father did. Um, you know, while his concern was always, you know, kind of what will the neighbors think, she was always much more concerned with, you know, will Jonas and Nicole Wyatt at the time, will Jonas and Wyatt, um, be safe around the neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted to make sure that we always had a safe place to come back to in her home. Um, and the only problem was, you know, at home, dad didn't get it. And so it took a while, but when our family was attacked, um, when we were in elementary school, he really stepped up and he said, you know, I don't get this, but I love my child and I'm going to protect my child, whatever it takes. Good for him. Yeah, right. Good for him. Wow. Um, yeah. I would imagine that would be really hard on, especially having an identical twin brother and, and just and going to school. And were you bullied at all? 
Yeah, well, we tried our best to work with the school and with you know uh, the other um, families and in the school system. And we did a gradual transition. I started transitioning when I was in first grade. And every year we kind of tacked a new thing onto it. Like, okay, this year you're gonna wear pink. This year you're gonna grow your hair out. Um, and so we tried to answer questions as they come up, came up. But um, th so there were always there were always bullies. I when I would um, ride the bus, I couldn't take the bus anymore um, because kids would refer to me as it on the bus, um, which doesn't exactly make you feel good. Um, and then in fifth grade, um, it really kind of peaked at. Um, a male student in my class. His grandfather was a part of a special interest uh, Christian right group, and he had his grandson follow me, follow me into the girls' bathroom. And you know, he said, "My grandfather says we don't have to have any faggots in our school." In fifth grade, so wow. Um, you know, you're you're so uh, eloquent. You're so put together, and 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 you know, carry yourself so well. Um, the fact that you have gone through what you've gone through and uh, you're so well balanced, I, I really admire you for that. Thank you that's very that's much. amazing. Right. I mean, that's tough. That's really tough. Hi, Jay. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. It's so nice to meet you. So I saw Transhood when it came out in November. You were supposed to be on right after that, but then I got COVID, so we had to shut down for a while. But uh, Transhood is, is fascinating, and especially for people who don't really understand it. I think it's a really important because it, it spans the, a long time to, to watch your journeys. Um, but explain it to everybody. Um, so basically, the documentary is about five different kids in the Kansas City area. Um, basically going through their journeys and how um, each one of us take a different path. And why did you decide to be part of that? Um, I wanted to spread awareness and help um, either a little girl or a little boy um, either find their way and, or help families understand their children that were going through the same thing that I was. Yeah, I think that would be one of the hardest things for everyone, for you, yourself, for your family, um, because it's, it's a really tricky thing that people don't understand. So, and, and you knew at five, six years old, and people would think that's really young to make a decision. And I know your family spent a long time thinking about this, but there are people who say at that age they know that they are not in the right body. Yes, um, so when I was five, I uh, told my mom constantly while fighting her to put boys clothes on that I was uh, a boy stuck in a girl's body. And uh, later on in years after research, at the age of 12 is when I started the documentary. And that is when I started my full transition with cutting my hair, hormones and all that such. What would you say to people who are going through something similar with their child? What would you say to parents? What's the best thing they can do if their child is saying that to them? Um, my best advice would be to let your, ch your child be th who they truly are meant to be and let them express who they are. Um, sometimes it, sh it can be uh, something that's hard to accept, um, but in the long run, as I think it, I see it as if as long as your child's happy, you should be happy too. And my mom always told me when I was little, express who you are and you'll, you'll be the happiest in life and you'll go the farthest in life. If um, you know, your parents support you, so it's just a matter of let your, children, your child be who they are. Yeah, that's obviously that's the best case scenario. You want a parent who yeah. just wants you to be happy, but a lot of parents want their children to be who they want them to be. I think it's really hard yeah. for parents to realize they're not you. They're not an extension of you. They're, they're their own beings. Evan, hi. Hi. Oh so you're 17 years old. Yes. First of all, congratulations Thank to get homecoming so queen. Much. I mean, oh, like. God. It means so much to me. Thank I'm you. sure. I, and I'll get to that story, but you're 17. At what age did you identify as a female? So ever since I could identify from boy from girl, which is about like two and a half, three years old, I went up to my parents and I was just like, I want to be a girl. I'm not comfortable with who I am. Um, I, obviously not in those exact words. I was two years old, but um, it just... I came up and told them, and my dad was like, you know, like, you have to do a lot of different changes to your body. And at that age, I was like, okay, and it's going to make me happy. And, you know, throughout my life, just experimenting with different fashion senses and different, you know, tastes of what I like to do, you know, throughout my life, playing all sorts of sports, um, I didn't enjoy any of them, like playing football for six to eight years. And 
with my brother and it was kind of more of just like a what of expectations of what a boy should be doing. Right. And even when I came out in freshman year as gay, that feel like it was just an excuse for my femininity to show out and be able to rock long hair, have nails, dress feminine the way I wanted to be without having to have the label. Right. Um, but it's just really good that I'm finally able to be who I actually am and have so much support. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. It's, um, it's amazing that you have so much support from, from your family, your, your friends, your peers, because that, that's not always been the case. And in, I'm, in, in a lot of, of places, it's still not the case. So you're very, very fortunate. So why did you decide to run? So you, you came out as gay. That didn't, that didn't feel right to you. And then, you, then everyone there knew that you were transgender, and that's who you are. And then you said, I'm going to run for homecoming queen. Yeah. Um, I kind of just like was like, I want to run for at least homecoming court. Like, that would be kind of fun to switch things up a bit. Like, have a transgender as the homecoming queen. Like, that would be kind of cool. Um, so I was kind of just like, you know, like, I had some of my friends like, here, put me on the ballot. Like, let's see if we can make this a little diverse. Like, let's change it up. Because, you know, a beautiful girl wins every year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, that's always my, been my dream, like, to, been that, to be that beautiful girl and have that moment of glory. And, you know, after I got, you know, nominated on the ballot, I was like, oh, my God, like, I've never been on the ballot. Like, this is crazy. And, you know, sooner or later, they announced who was on homecoming court, and it was me, the first name they called. And it was absolutely astonishing to me. I just couldn't believe it. I so much support from... What did you feel when you, when you found out that you were the homecoming queen? What did you feel? The queen, oh my God, when I found out I was the queen, I couldn't even tell you like with one word response. Like I was just, it was just breathtaking. Like having most of the student body, you know, cause there's obviously people out there still in my school, you know, may not accept me or support me, which is okay. I mean, I'm not trying to change people's ways of accepting me or understanding it. I'm just trying to be that role model for other LGBTQ kids especially trans girls who are very having a sh hard time sh um, transitioning. Because, you know, like, I had a very, very hard time. You know, um, nine months ago, I was very depressed, very anxiety, and very much, you know, a lot of mental health issues that a lot of trans people have. You know, the suicide rate is like 68% for trans girls. So just me being able to be that role model throughout my school to other trans kids and LGBTQ plus kids really makes my heart happy and really shows that, you know, the society is growing. And even though there is a lot of improvement, there's, a, you know, it's getting somewhere. So. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I heard that you're a, a fan of the Kardashians. Oh, my God, yeah. Who isn't? Everyone loves the I Kardashians. I love the Kardashians. I always can I think be it, one? Uh, <laughs> can you be one? Oh, my God, yeah. I don't know. I'll ask if, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, an honorary, I, I'm honorary. I'm Carla Kardashian. Um, oh, my God, yes. 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 But um, I'll ask if you can, if you want to be in the Kardashian family. Let me ask, um, who can we ask? Chloe? Chloe! Oh my God. We are just like mushing and gushing over one another. Oh my goodness. Sit down. Take a seat Thank on my you. on my set. Yeah. So I am so in the family. Oh done. Okay. Yes. Hello. Oh my god. Done. I literally was just on your Instagram, like. <laughs> <laughs> You're so beautiful. Thank You're so, so brave. Much. So I'm you. so proud of you. Oh my God. And Thank to you be so much. 17, or are you still 17? I'm 17. 17, and just to know who you are and be as confident, mature, and this brave. I'm so proud of you and your high school. Thank you so much. That's yeah. amazing. So much yeah. To me. Yeah. Oh my God. What do you have to, you, you wanted to say something, right? We have a little present for you. Oh my God. So it's basically oh. everything the whole family everything makes. Everything Kardashian Jenner related. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. This and so much more. Oh my God. Yes. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much. Oh my you God. just don't have the tequila because you're 17. Yeah. So you have the tequila when you're 21, we'll send yeah. you. Oh my gosh. Yeah.